Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with this evening's live stream. We'll have a look at some of the main news stories that have caught my attention in the Spanish press over the last couple of days or so. Some comments that have been left on videos recently we'll also look at. And then in the second half of the video, around the 20-minute mark around there, we'll go into the chat section and see what is happening in the chat section. Now, don't forget to hit the like button if you like what you are watching. And uh, as I said, we'll get straight into the news. And uh, the Prime Minister, Pedro Sánchez, has been busy in recent times telling everybody what he has planned for the next four years. And one of the big announcements that he made the other day is about a new anti-pornography law so that children cannot access this sensitive material. As we can see here, the government's plan to protect kids from porn. Such content distorts perception of sexuality. The Spanish government says that when children see pornography at an early stage in their lives, it, ca it can cause problems. These include changing how they see sex, becoming addicted, acting in sexually inappropriate ways, and thinking violence against women is normal. The government thinks pornography treats women as objects, not people. These concerns are in a report about protecting kids from internet pornography. The report is likely to be approved next Tuesday by the Council of Ministers. Pedro, Pre President Pedro Sánchez, or Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez, mentioned on Sunday in an interview with El País that they plan to make a new law. Um, they plan to make a new law to protect kids on the internet and create a big plan involving different government department so there we go the government's plan to protect children from porn now how are they going to do this well there are some theories about nobody knows exactly what they're going to do but one of the theories apparently is to get people to prove how old they are before they access this content over 18 only and as we can see here the anti-porn project for children may force all users to verify their age with their ID card. The Spanish government is asking tech companies to work hard to keep kids and teenagers safe from adult content. They are planning a project with different government departments. This project includes a new way to check the age of people online. Everyone, even adults, may have to prove their age by showing an ID like a passport or driver's license to a special office before they can visit websites that are not for kids. But these websites won't know who the people are or get their personal information. So that is what we are being told. Uh, people that want to access this adult content or or any other content for that matter, which will be uh, off limits to kids, most likely you will have to get some type of uh, digital certificate from the, uh, the Mint here in Spain, the people that uh, hand out these digital certificates that will prove your age and then you will be able to access this content online should you want to do so. So we'll see how this one plays out over the next uh, few weeks, few months, until they get this uh, new law up and running and uh, passed in the parliament. We'll see. But I'm sure that there are lots, uh, lot, a, lot, a lot more information, I should say, uh, still waiting to be revealed as far as this law is concerned. Now, onto the Spanish property market, an article sent through today from John. And uh, good news for homeowners here in Spain because Spanish house prices recover to the level of 2008. Data recently published by the National Institute of Statistics on Spanish housing prices in the third quarter of last year shows prices recovering to where they were back in 2008, at least in nominal terms. It has taken 15 years for the average Spanish house price to get back to where it was at the tail end of the last boom, revealed the latest Span Spanish property price figures from the INE as illustrated in the chart above. Although the average Spanish house price has recovered to where it was 15 years ago in nominal terms, in real terms adjusted for inflation, the average price is still 35% below the level of the first quarter of 2008. Prices have arisen 50% in nominal terms since 2015, but anyone who invested in the bubble period that was already deflating by 2008 is probably still nursing negative equity. And that is true for many people. And we can see the house price index from the Spanish Property Insight website, where it was uh, back in 2008 at 100%, going down, 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 hitting uh, its uh, rock bottom. 
uh, in 2012, I think that is, and now back in nominal terms, as we said, to where it was back in 2008. So it's been a long road for property owners in this country. And as we saw there, a lot of people negating, uh, uh, nursing negative equity for a long, long time because when the market crashed, it really crashed. If anybody who was around then uh, will be able to tell you. Now, the next piece of news, we'll go on to it now. And it is uh, job security and the high price of housing mean that only 16% of young people in Spain are able to leave their family home. Young people in Spain are finding it hard to live on their own. A new report from the Youth Council's Emancipation Observatory shows that the average age for young people in Spain to start living independently is 30.3 years of age. This is one of the highest ages in Europe, only behind Greece and Italy. The report says that the number of young people living on their own went up a little bit in the first half of 2023 to 16.3%. This is the first increase since 2020 and a small improvement from the year before, but it is still much lower than levels before the pandemic, 18.7%, and far below the highest level before the, the 2008 or 2008 economic crisis, 26.1%. So young people still finding it hard to break free from the family home, should they want to. Because remember, a lot of people don't want to break free from the family home, from the nest, as they say. They like living with their parents. They're comfortable living with their parents in a hotel-like arrangement for many. And uh, parents also don't like to see their uh, children head off out into the yonder. So uh, that is one of the reasons too, but uh, also difficult for young people because they don't get job security. They don't have high salaries. And with the price of rent, in uh, Spanish cities, big cities at least, very, very high. And of course, salaries uh, not in line with what people pay for rents, I don't think a lot of the time. So difficult for young people to emancipate uh, from their parents. Difficult. Now into the uh, comment section, we'll see some comments that have been left on the channel in recent times. The first one here from Ivan. This lady did not have her EU settlement scheme documents in order, so refusal, so refusal of admission was a potential danger, and she travelled either way. Yeah, I think that is the case, Ivan, that this uh, lady in question, the woman in question who was refused entry into the UK despite her husband and her dog living in the UK, she wasn't allowed in around, uh, I think it was on Christmas Day, don't quote me on the exact date there, but around that uh, period, she left for Malaga because her sister had a baby, so she wanted to see the new member of the family. But when she returned to the United Kingdom, uh, no. Senorita, you cannot come into the United Kingdom. You do not have your papers in order. And most likely, as Ivan points out here, she didn't have the settlement scheme documents in order. And as somebody also pointed out yesterday, I think it was, whenever you're going through one of these um, bureaucratic processes regarding immigration in the UK, or other countries for that matter, uh, the recommendation is uh, not to leave while the papers are being processed. I think that's the advice, but this woman apparently uh, didn't heed that advice, left to visit family, and uh, wasn't allowed back in. So we'll see how this one ends up, but uh, uh, one group in the UK kicking up a stink, saying that the United Kingdom now is a hostile territory for people from the EU trying to create problems, no doubt, between other European countries and the United Kingdom because of that uh, Brexit uh, disharmony, let's say. Another one here from the Seoul home. As an Australian, just letting everyone know that Stu's Australian accent is not muted. Uh, uh, most of us sound exactly the same. Some Queensland or Outback accents can be stronger, especially when you put a TV camera in front of them. So there we go. Thank you very much, Soul Home, for that um, for that uh, comment there. Somebody saying that maybe my accent was muted uh, because I live in a foreign country, and of course you want people to understand you, so your accent might not be as strong as it would be if you were living at home. But uh, according to the Soul Home, uh, not muted. 
we sound the same. And I think that's uh, reasonably true. As pointed out there, if you go into some of the country areas, some of the outback areas, you might come across a, a real ocker with a real ocker accent. But uh, city dwellers like myself, people that have lived in a city, educated in a city, we tend to speak the same uh, Australia-wide. Not much uh, regional variation, not like you get in places like the United Kingdom or even the United States when it comes to regional variation of accents. Thank you. One here from Matt. The UK is not a hostile state to Spanish citizens. We love the Spanish and Spain itself. However, if we overstayed our or overstated or overstayed our 9180 rule without the correct documentation for residency, surely I would be or surely I would be removed from Spain too. Just have all your documentation in order and you'll be fine. Yeah, good advice there I think from uh, that person, Matt. Have your documentation in order and you should be okay. And as we know, when you are going through a residency uh, or residence uh, permit process, probably better to do what the uh, law states and uh, not come in and out of the country and uh, violate the regulations regarding residency, which we think is what happened to uh, Maria from Malaga when she returned to the United Kingdom to be with her husband and her pooch. Hmm. Another one here from uh, Clement or Clement. Spain is driving us British with uh, Spain is driving us British with holiday homes in Spain, driving us out, I imagine, by charging us extra tax and the banks putting extra charge when we pay into an account. So Clem not happy there about what's going on. Extra taxes and extra uh, charges uh, by the banks when they put money into the account. Don't know, but uh, I have read people complaining about this. On uh, other comments, uh, basically what happens here in Spain with the Spanish banks at least, it's pretty hard not to uh, get charged by them. Uh, unless you are living in the country and you have uh, your uh, pay slip or your what they call here the nomina or your salary uh, going directly into your bank account every month, which uh, is what most people have, three or four bills coming in and out every month and uh, also other things like credit cards and um other things that the banks want you to have, insurance, then then you might get a free bank account. If you don't have meet those conditions, you will be charged. And I'm sure that's what's happening here to uh, Clement. But uh, don't know exactly, but if anybody else is in the same situation as Clement uh, is uh, with his home in Spain, let us know in the comment section. Another one here from Anne. Just do your bit. If you see it, pick it up. And if you use it, take with you. Cigarette butts are one big problem. It takes up to 10 years for them to break down. So I think, so think and save the ocean. End of my rant from Anne. Anne's rant about uh, littering. And uh, also these little plastic pellets that have washed up on the beaches in Galicia and other parts of northern Spain, which is going to take a long time to uh, clean up. Volunteers already started. Uh, on their hands and knees trying to pick these little pellets up, I believe. Not an easy task. And uh, they are looking for more volunteers to head to that part of Spain and uh, help with the cleanup. But uh, Anne is right. When you just do your bit, if you see something, pick it up. Uh, cigarette butts are a big problem in Spain. Also in Australia, I noticed, well, I saw one idiot smoking at the beach. Couldn't believe it. Uh, I went to a beach in a place called Mandra, just south of Perth. Uh, and uh, if anybody who's been to Mandra will know uh, what I'm, where I'm heading with this, a uh, person jumps into the uh, water with a cigarette in hand and was holding onto it like this so that it wouldn't get wet every time a wave crashed over his face. Now, what he did with that cigarette when uh, obviously it got wet or he had finished with it, I imagine was just dump it in the water. So it happens there, it happens here, it happens everywhere. Big problem, cigarette butts on beaches. I think there's one beach in Alicante that found millions of cigarette beaches in the sand when they decided to uh, clean the beach there. So a huge problem. So uh, we'll take Anne's advice on board and just do our bit, and if we see it, pick it up. Another one here from Andrew. Hi there, Stuart. I noticed you made a foray into my favourite subject, that is the consumption of the amber nectar, beer. I think we can all agree on your observations that Castlemaine 4X, Foster's and other such Aussie abominations 
Uh, but can you say a few words about the spectacular craft brewery scene in Rivas, where I live? I wrenched myself along to the beer festival in September and was completely bowled over, literally and figuratively, by the outstanding heroic Rivas IPA brewers. Thanks, Andrew, for the comment, and uh, long time no see, Andrew. I remember, Andrew, back in the day, we uh, uh, worked together teaching English, and uh, Andrew, also a, a fan of the Amber Nectar, as he points out here, beer, and not uh, a fan of the 4X, Foster's, and other bad Aussie beers that, uh, well, back in the day, we had no choice but to drink those ones, because that was all you could get, basically. But uh, nowadays, uh, lots of craft beers. And also in uh, Rivas, as Andrew points out, there was a beer festival last year. I went to the beer festival, didn't coincide with Andrew, but I did see a lot of these uh, independent brewers on display. They weren't all from uh, Rivas. A lot of them were from uh, Vallecas. There was another one from uh, Paracuellos de Jarama. There was one or two from Rivas, I think, but the majority were from other places in the Madrid community. But they set up their stalls at the local uh, fairground here. Uh, it was free admission. The beers, uh, I can't remember what we were charged for beers. The food was expensive, I will say. There were some food trucks there that were charging quite um, quite uh, crazy prices for uh, hot dogs and things like that. But the beer wasn't all that expensive, and it was good if you like that type of uh, craft beer, uh, IPAs and the like. So uh, thanks, Andrew, for that. And uh, I'll try not to mention the word uh, Castlemaine, Forex, Fosters, or any other rubbish Australian beer, just my opinion. Maybe there are people out there that like those beers, but I don't personally. And I equate those beers with the uh, with the stuff you get on tap here in a lot of bars. It's uh, okay on a hot day when you're desperate for a cold beverage, but uh, the rest of the time, stay away. And the final one here from Young Spirit. I'm angry about the idi idiotic and un uneducated comment from the Galician member of the government. The comment from the hotelier was ridiculous as well. How can a country s sustainably have millions of tourists come to visit when they can't clean up their beaches and do not care about sustainability? Yes, the uh, idiotic and uneducated comment from the Galician member of government. Not only is he a member of government there in Galicia, but he's the minister, I think, for the environment. So those words were uh, probably even worse if you take into, in, into account his position. And what he said was that plastic is basically part of our everyday lives. We eat plastic every day. It goes in and it comes out. So his, um, uh, his uh, take on the uh, environmental disaster in Galicia was that it's uh, overblown. Uh, move on. Get on with your lives. Plastic is part of them. Get used to it. And the hotelier, Mr. Barcelo saying that uh, 80 million tourists or 88, 89 million tourists this year, I think, in Spain, uh, not enough. We can handle 100 million plus. And there's no issues when it comes to sustainability, according to Mr. Barcelo. But, of course, uh, he owns hotels and he wants those hotels full. And no doubt he wants more hotels uh, around the Spanish coast. But uh, those were his words, not mine. But uh, according to the young spirit here, uh, idiotic, uneducated from the Galician member of government and ridiculous comments from the hotelier, Mr. Barcelo. Now, I'm going to go into the comment section now. Uh, sorry, the chat section, not the comment section. We've looked at that. So firstly, I'm going to put the like icon on the screen. If you haven't hit it yet, please do so. Just below the video, you will find the like icon. Do me a favor and hit it, please. We're currently sitting at 54. I'll also say thanks to people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's through Super Thanks, buying me a coffee, the person that bought me a coffee the other day. Thank you for that. And longer term supporters on Patreon. And uh, I'm going to make an announcement, and it is that um, I've opened up the membership on this uh, channel here on YouTube. Starting at one ninety nine a month, now that's fairly cheap, uh, not even a co price of a coffee a month to help support the channel. All you have to do is join. And uh, there's also another option there for a super member, which is a little bit more expensive, but still affordable in my opinion. If you want to support the channel, help me make more content, which is the objective, you can do it that way. Or you can support the channel in other ways, should you so desire. But options are there. Now, um... 
into the chat section, but before, it's a comment section, but before I do, changing the backdrop, this one here was sent through recently from Mike, I think about a month ago maybe, Mike sent one this one through from uh, Javier, and it's a sunrise in that part of Spain, down there on the Valencian coast, on the Valencian community, I think in the uh, province of Alicante, but don't quote me on that, I think Javier is Alicante, just up the road from Benidorm, a nice picture sent through and if you've got a similar picture that you would like on the backdrop i'll just put it on the backdrop give me one minute one minute uh here we go so if you would like uh your picture on the backdrop the email address is this one here spain speaks at gmail.com and if you've got any other info that you would like to send my way for example john sent me that article today about the spanish property market finally getting back to 2008 figures uh, it's been a long ride for homeowners, no doubt about that, especially if you have a mortgage, a long time waiting to get your um, uh, your investment back to what you paid. Long time coming. But anyway, we'll move on. Now into the chat section. Let's go. Let me scroll up, see what's going on there. Some familiar, Some familiar faces, I should say. Some familiar names in the chat section. For example, Barbara, regular viewer. Another pleasant day in Playa Flamenca. Thanks, Barbara, for that. James and Kathy coming in um, from uh, Cabo Ro oh, Back in Worcester now after a month in Cabo Roche. Uh, some pictures were sent through from James and Kathy, so we'll be seeing those in uh, future live streams. Thanks, guys, for that. I uh, hope I had a good time in Australia. Nice, warm sunshine. Absolutely, I did. Fantastic time down there. Warm. Uh, Paul Gerard, hope we've all had a good start to 2024. Thanks for that. Renan, back in LA after uh, time in Spain. Good to see you, Renan. Marianne, back in the chat from San Diego. Great to hear you from Spain, although I loved your reports from Perth. Yeah, it was uh, interesting putting them out from there. The time difference was the uh, the killer. Marianne, of course, uh, Perth, seven hours ahead of uh, Spain time. Don't even know how what the difference it would be, what the difference would be with uh, San Diego, but uh, yeah, I was doing the videos there early in the morning. Uh, my days were starting quite early, and I'd have the video recorded by around 9 a.m. Perth time, uh, up on the internet by uh, 11 because very slow connections in um, in Perth at least when it comes to internet. Uh, nothing like what I have here. Terrible internet connections, the ones that I saw. Maybe you can get decent internet connections, but I didn't get one. So it took me a while to upload, but everything was uploaded normally by uh, around 11 a.m. And uh, just waiting to go live. Uh, I think I was going live or putting the videos, uh, uh, making the videos live at around 10 p.m. Uh, Perth time, 3 p.m. Spain time. So I was getting everything out the way early. It was quite a good uh, work routine. I had my days free. Denise, coming in from Menorca, 17 degrees there today. Thanks, Denise, for that. Good to see you in the chat. Alan, hola, mis amigos. Glad to be back in San Diego, 14 degrees. Stu, I can sympathize with your jet lag. Just uh, in from 24 hours of flights from Buenos Aires. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, jet lag is an issue for me. Some people say it, uh, said the other day it doesn't affect them, but for me, no doubt it does. Stephen coming in, uh, getting colder and colder from North London. Grant's in the chat as well. Old guy doing stuff. Greetings from Seattle up there in Asturias. Uh, Kevin, hello from Washington State. It's been nine below zero the past few mornings. I've had 36 centimetres of snow in the past week. Looking forward to visiting Spain in April. I can imagine, Kevin, well, after that winter, I can imagine. I guess we're doing 7 p.m. or 1,900 hours. Well, not, not, um, nothing set in stone yet, uh, Alan. I'm uh, trying to bring my working days or reduce my working days a bit here. I found that the 7.30 was pushing on, finishing at around 10 past 8. By the time I got everything done, I wasn't having dinner sometimes until quarter to nine, nine o'clock. A bit late. And after uh, being in Australia, where people are normally in bed by half past nine, ten, uh, it's a bit of a shock getting back into this uh, routine. But uh, yeah, I think we'll probably go back to some days seven, some days 7.30. Don't know. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. Makish, first time back in the lives. Welcome back. A bit early today, or is the uh, time for the lives changing? Yeah, 
as I just said, Makish, haven't uh, worked it out yet, but uh, we will. We will work it out. Uh, Belinda, of course, now that I'm ready to get uh, a flat in Sevilla, a massive, massive uh, adjustment. Best to jump in soon. Thanks, Belinda. Looking to get property in Sevilla. Uh, Philip coming in from um, Northumberland there in England. Philip recently lost his uh, dad, Harry. Uh, Sorry to hear that. I sent you an email, of course, uh, Philip, at the time. Getting back into the uh, live streams. Unfortunately, without uh, dad by Philip's side. Always sad when uh, a, a family member, especially your dad, passes, right? Good to see you, Philip. Chin up, chin up. Makish, there's no, uh, there is a beauty to how kids live with their parents. I find that so many cultures in the West leave their parents and family after moving out. There's a real beauty to seeing families together. Yeah, I think but people would like to have the choice, Makish, to be honest. Um, I think people would like to have the uh, salary in their pocket every month that gives them the choice, right? But the frustration comes when you don't have that choice and you feel that you're trapped at home. I think that's the issue. That's what a lot of people are complaining about. But it's the age-old problem here in Spain that when people start working, the salaries are poo-poo. And um, they just don't make enough money to do anything, basically, than to uh, spend it at the weekend uh, on the uh, getting drunk with their friends, a lot of them, because they don't have any money for anything else. That is the reality. And uh, a lot of people study uh, at universities close to home, so they uh, live at home when they study. So it's a real issue, but I think people would just like to have the choice if they want to move out, you know, have a salary that, uh, that allows them to do it. If they want to live at home, fantastic, and save their money, great. But it's the choice issue, I think. John, coming in from uh, the UK, I hope you're well and hope the week's going well. Thanks, John, for that. Yeah, not so bad so far. Kim, pornography and young minds has no place in society. Try working in a secondary school. Having said that, perhaps parents have a role to play. ID is a good idea. Yeah, the idea is, uh, Kim, as we saw, that you would have to go and uh, register and get some type of online certificate that hopefully uh, all of these adult content sites uh, would be on board with. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Don't even know where these places are based. Are they based in the States? Are they based in the Bahamas? Who knows where they're based and whether they will play uh, along uh, with the Spanish government's rules? Got no idea. Um To be honest, I have no idea. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Robert coming in from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Stronger family is something that may be more beneficial than assumed. Thanks, sir, Robert, for that. Also agreeing with the previous comment from Makish. Mitchell coming in from South Africa. A young family moving to Asturias in the summer. Do you have any suggestions of areas where you can get the best city life and suburban outdoor life? Yes, yeah, Studias. Obviously, uh, you're aware of the uh, weather in that part of Spain, Mitchell. I imagine that you are. Uh, it's uh, one of the wetter parts of the country, but it's also advantageous if you like greenery, because you won't be getting much green in other parts of the country. So it has its pros and its cons. Damp, of course, colder. But um, Oviedo is a great city where you can get a a, a suburban life and an outdoor life because everything's very close in those places as well. The cities are not big. You can get in and out of the cities quite easily provided you have some type of transport and you can be in uh, mountains or in uh, Oviedo, even in the in the at the coast you can be at the coast in don't quote me on this but probably 30 40 minutes I think you can be in the coast at the coast you can get to the coast so Oviedo would be the city capital uh, of that uh, 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 principality I think Asturias as well the capital of Oviedo or maybe it's not the capital it's the biggest city sorry I might be wrong with the capital but I think the capital is another city there but anyway it's the biggest city there Gijón is another city that you could look at on the coast though um yeah an industrial city so uh, i don't know we'll get some uh advice from people i'm sure on uh, where the best place in uh, asturias is to go is Oviedo the capital or not i can't remember could be don't know michael uh okay heidi welcome back uh says heidi house prices might have recovered but we now get whacked with the ibi 
the Eevee taxes, the uh, home tax that you have to pay in Spain. Uh, Tranqui says, uh, ING is ordered, always treated uh, me fairly. A lot of people happy with ING, of course, but um, yeah, you have to meet uh, certain, um, certain criteria as well, though, right, Tranqui? Like uh, the Quenta Nomina and things like that. Marco here, good day, mate. Absolutely peeing it down with ice balls in central Portugal. It's allegedly heading to Spain. Best regards, Marco. Yeah, I think uh, we saw that. Quite wet yesterday. Rain again tomorrow, I believe. Also, Akin asking people to hit the uh, like button. Thanks for that. Uh, what else? Is uh, Forex uh, a pornographic beer? No, it is not. <laughs> it's just the name that they came up with back in the day. Don't know why. Heidi saying that uh, her daughter shares. Uh, she doesn't make a huge amount, but it's her choice to live and work independently. Those who don't move out, it's usually because they like creature comforts. Young men. Mm. There we go. Keisha Bank ra ra Racketeers says, Heidi, I bank with uh, Keisha. I've got uh, quite a few things with them, so they don't charge. There are some things that I don't like about Keisha Bank, but for me it's convenience because with all of the changes in the banking system here over the last 10 years, banks uh, disappearing off the face of the earth, uh, one of the ones that um, uh, has stuck around and I became a Keisha customer quite a long time ago because in Madrid, uh, Keisha was like, um, like uh, you know, it was like the bank nobody used. Everybody used Caja Madrid, so there were these huge queues all the time. But Keisha Bank, you never got that. But now Keisha Bank's the dominant bank in uh, in Spain. So I'm still with them. Hmm. Ricardo, coming in here from uh, North London, just uh, got in from work, super simmering and a bottle of red opening. Cheers, glad I made it to the live stream. I've changed the time, as I said, but I might go back. Uh, uh, we'll see whether I go back to the 7.30. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Mandy and Bun, Misty Moo, thanks. Uh, uh, all the best. Thanks for that. What else we got going on here? Raining in Malaga, says Upsticks. Yay, we need it. Upsticks, obviously, um, with a uh, YouTube channel as well. Check that out. Upsticks to Spain. I think it's the same uh, place. Not sure. Uh, Jane and uh, Pete, not sure if Pete's here as well. Uh, able to watch the line because we are live because we have a snowy day. No school due to negative temperatures. Wind chills up to minus 12. Yeah, sounds uh, nasty. Sounds nasty. Taraz finally made it to the live feed. Been following along. I uh, rely on the information. I so enjoyed Perth. It's, um, don't know where that is. It's uh, minus 1.7 degrees Celsius. This is warm compared to yesterday. Not sure where Taraz is, but cold there. Shangan coming in from uh, Shanghai, uh, 18 there. Uh, Upsticks, uh, whereabouts in Malaga is Upsticks? I'm sure we'll get an answer to that. Uh, Taraz saying, uh, sorry to hear about uh, Philip Dad. Prayers uh, to um, uh, to Phil there. Uh Hi, from uh, Mijas, Malaga. Been here for two years, Shiva. Canadian, originally. There we go. Moving to a warmer climate. Uh, Peter, greetings from a snowy New Jersey. Looking forward to being in Madrid next week. Hope all goes well with that trip, Peter. Not sure what the weather's going to be like, but uh, hopefully uh, it won't be too rainy for your stay here, as it has been in the last couple of days. Oviedo is the capital. Thanks for that. I always doubt sometimes with the... Um, with these uh, capital cities, because sometimes, for example, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I know in Galicia, for example, Santiago de Compostela is the capital and not one of the biggest cities. So that's why I, I question that. Uh, northwest of Spain reminds Shiva of uh, Vancouver, Pacific Northwest. Probably similar, that's right, that's it. Uh, Ian's saying, so the porn ID is just another nudge to digital ID with access granted to use the internet, etc. Yeah, probably. I think something like that it sounds like, exactly. What else? What else we got going on here? F off. Hope that's not directed at me. Manolo here. Saludos desde Boston, Massachusetts. We had a couple of people from uh, Massachusetts today. As for papers, try getting into the US without the correct docs. I imagine, Ian, that's a, an issue, right? I imagine it's an issue. 
trying to get anywhere without the correct documentation. Mm-hmm. Alan saying that uh, Cudillero, uh, near Oviedo, extraordinary place, most attractive coastal resorts I've ever seen. Big words, Alan, big words. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, banks like Monzo, Curve, Revolut, N26, common in Spain. Not sure why anyone would depend on Spanish entities when they're not the most trustworthy. Is that the dog there on the beach in the background? Just come in. Come in. I think so. Uh, banks uh, like Monzo. I think so. I think we've uh, got uh, Revolut uh, in Spain, I think. Uh, or at least they operate in Spain. N26. Don't know about the other two brands. But uh, N26 definitely has a presence here, and Revolut, I think, also. But I'm not sure of their uh, market share. Uh, Taraz is in uh, Denver Metro. That's it, the cold spell there. Sorry about that. And uh, Upsticks is in uh, Alurin de la Torre in Malaga. Now, that's the end of the uh, chat, end of the live stream. It's been a pleasure as always. I'll just uh, get organized here. I'll be back again on Thursday with another live stream. Another video will be coming out tomorrow, and just the normal news videos. Stay tuned for that. And uh, as I said, another live stream on Thursday, 7 or 7.30 p.m. I think 7.30 p.m. on Thursday because I've got something to do until then. So 7.30 will be the next live stream. Hope to see you guys then. It's been a pleasure as always. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Adios.